This is Frida Kahlo. Frida was a very famous Mexican artist whose art was strongly influenced by her Latin American background. Frida was born in a small village just outside of Mexico City on July 6, 1907, where she grew up with her parents and five sisters. When Frida was only six years old, she contracted a disease known as polio, which made her very sick. It weakened her right leg and kept her in bed for nine months. So, instead of playing games and activities with her sister, Frida spent most of her time alone in her house drawing. However, even though she always loved art, Frida Kahlo did not always want to be an artist. Instead, she first dreamed of becoming a doctor. Unfortunately, before she could follow her dream of being a doctor, Frida was in a terrible bus accident that left her unable to walk for three whole months. During this time, Frida began to paint more and more while she was stuck in her hospital bed. Painting helped Frida pass the time and to express her feelings but it also made her realize that she did want to be an artist. Frida Kahlo is most famous for her many self-portraits, which she used to express her emotions and her individuality in order to show the world who she was. Frida was very proud of her Mexican heritage, and she shows this in her paintings by using bright colors, symbols of her culture, and traditional Mexican clothing. Although Frida Kahlo passed away in 1954 at the age of 47, she is remembered today as a strong woman who used her art to express herself, overcome hard times in her life, and inspire the world around her. Now that we have all learned about Frida Kahlo, we are going to make our very own self-portrait. For this activity, you will have your own mirror. Not as big as ours, of course. You will need a pencil, a piece of paper, an eraser, and crayons for this activity. You will have a box of crayons similar to this one at your table. You will be very gentle with our crayons and we will not be spilling or dumping the box out on our table. You will also have your own eraser at your table. Please use the large eraser and not the eraser on the back of your pencil so we do not rip our paper. When we start, we will take a good look at ourselves in the mirror to find out what we need to draw. We can start our self-portrait by drawing a big circle on our paper for our face making sure that we leave enough room for us to draw our neck and shoulders. Once we get our head shape drawn in, we can draw two lines with a U that connects them for our neck. We should not be drawing stick necks with only one line. Because we left enough room and did not make our head too big, we can start at the bottom of our neck and draw in our shoulders. Next, we will check our mirror to see where our eyes should go on our face and draw them in. We can draw nice, just right sized ovals for the outside shape of our eyes, but not too big or they will take up too much of our face and not too small or we will have too much space on our face. Remember, you can always keep checking your mirror to know how big and where to place your eyes nose, mouth, and ears. When we check our mirror again, we can, we can find out where our mouth is and draw it in. You can make yourself smiling or just draw on your lips. It's up to you. After our mouth, we check our mirror again and draw our nose. You can make your nose a triangle shape, a triangle with a W on the bottom, or even shaped like the letter C or U. Slowly, we can start to add in more details. It's important to remember things like drawing in the smaller circles inside of our eyes and our teeth if we are smiling. 
We also need to draw our ears on both sides of our head and also our hair or hairline if we have short hair. Then we will check our mirror again and see if we have any other details like glasses or necklaces or earrings that we can add to our self-portrait too. Finally, just like Frida Kahlo added things in her paintings about who she was, I would like all of you to add something to your self-portrait that represents who you are. This can be something that represents your culture like Frida Kahlo did, or it can represent an activity that you love, or even something that is just special to you, like a trophy or a medal that you've won. For his self-portrait, my son Evan drew in a baseball to represent his love of the sport. Finally, after we finish drawing in pencil, we can color it in with our crayons. We should try to pick colors that look like what we see in the mirror to color our self-portraits. Take your time coloring and make sure everything is filled in neatly. Remember, do not spill or dump out our crayons on the table. Try to use one color at a time, and when you are finished using a crayon, place it carefully back into the box so we can keep our area clean. If you have finished coloring your self-portrait and you still have time, you may go back over all of your pencil lines to make your self-portrait really stand out. When you're done, if you finish today, we can take our portraits home. But don't forget, it's important to sign your name on your paper.